Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with an awesome new unboxing for you on a new Mass Drop collaboration. If you go back on my channel, I've had quite a few of these Mass Drop knives on my channel. I did a video on the Ferrum Forge collab, Falcon Crutch, and the Gent. I also recently did a video on this awesome Gavco Knives Thresher collaboration. A very exciting collaboration right here. Go back and check out my video on that one. But now, guys, we have a brand new collaboration with the godfather, the actual father of the folding tactical knife, Bob Terzola. Bob Terzola is a legend in the knife making community because he literally wrote the book on how to make a folding tactical knife. He described the literal ways to make each component of it and the purpose behind it. And his original design was the ACTF, the Advanced Combat Tactical Folder. I think that's what it sounded, what an Advanced Compact Tactical Folder. Good Lord, he's gonna kill me for saying that. But the ACTF was his, is his classic design. And now it has been brought to the masses by Mass Drop and Wee Knives in the form of the CTF the compact tactical folder. And so here is the box that it comes in. It says it right here, and it gives us a little bit of a uh, story here designed by Bob Trezula, the godfather of the tactical folder. The CTF is made with S35VN G10 and titanium liners. So quite a nice box. It comes in this mass drop labeled case right here. As we know, these knives are made by Wee Knives, so it has a similar set of things from Wee Knives. This one comes with an awesome microfiber cloth with the Terzola Dragon logo on it. I like that very much. You get a very cool patch that you can iron onto something, uh, and it comes in this nice padded pouch right here. So super impressed with the initial impressions and the packaging quality there. It does make a difference, especially considering this knife comes in at the $130 price point. Even at the $100 price point, uh, Mass Drop and Wee Knives include a lot in the packaging, so it's impressive to see that coming in here at the $130 price point. So let's go ahead and get some vital signs on this guy so we can see what we're looking at. Up front is a three and a quarter inch blade of S35VN. You're looking at 7.6 inches of overall length, 4.3 inches of handle, with about 3.6 inches of grip area right there. The blade stock is coming in at 128 thousandths, uh, and the handle is 0.48 inches. So it's a thin, slicey, easy to carry EDC knife. This thin uh, titanium liner construction with G10 scales keeps the weight down, although it's not the lightest knife I've ever handled right here, but it is coming in at three ounces. So three ounces to three and a quarter inches of blade hits that ratio quite nicely. Uh, less than uh, the, the ounces are less than the inches of blade length. I like that. So speaking of the blade length, let's break this knife down anatomically. Up front is that blade of S35VN done in the classic Terzula grind. I actually really like that they included the Terzula Dragon logo without any further logoing or lettering. Uh, I think that there was some contention about the fact that they didn't write the word Terzula Tactical or Bob Terzula on here and rather just put the Dragon logo. But I think that it looks cleaner that way and I certainly know what that logo means and I hope that the rest of the knife community by watching this movie, by watching this video, understands the importance of Bob Terzula in the knife making game. We would not have folding tactical knives if it were not for Bob Terzula, at least in the way that we have them today. My entire channel is based on reviewing folding tactical knives and he truly is the father of these knives and it's an honor to be able to have this design available to everyone. Uh, so what does he have here? He has a classic drop point blade shape. It's got a mid height full. Uh, he's got a mid height flat grind, a top swedge. He's got a fuller in the blade to reduce weight and increase strength, and it has a thumb disc deployment. This also has a flipper deployment. This also has deployment via the fuller. So one of the things that I really like are the various ways that you can get this knife open, and that certainly is keeping in tune with Bob Trezula's tactical idealism. 
The tactical nature of this knife is that you can get it open in various ways, in various situations, and so this knife will be able to work for you uh, no matter what's going on. Uh, I find that it's easiest to flip this with the thumb using the fat of the thumb. It's easy to flick from the fuller with the, uh, the, in, the ring finger back there or the middle finger, and it's very easy to either light switch or push button this. So the opening is quite nice uh, with all of these different mechanisms. I do like that the thumb disc is actually stylized in bronzed anodized titanium. I see uh, potential here for a lot of people to change these out. There are a lot of different options. For a lot of different knives, this seems to be a standard size thumb disc, so I imagine you could replace it with any of the custom jobs that are out there, and I think it would look great. There's a little bit of jimping back here, although the thumb tends to rest more on that thumb disc. That is one thing about thumb disc knives. It does seem to be a nice landing zone for the thumb. You can choke up on this knife. There's not an, uh, a, a real choil going on there, but you can rest your finger there rather securely and do some finer work. The actual sharpening choil is uh, mediocre at best. Uh, I will say that uh, they could be a little bit more pronounced, although the blade is sharpened all the way back, and it does, it did come quite sharp. Moving back to the pivot, this guy runs on ceramic bearings and phosphor bronze washers. Very, very smooth action. I've had this now for a few days and I've been playing with it and uh, I took it apart and oiled it and it is unbelievably smooth. Very, very nicely done for how lightweight the blade is and how small it is. It certainly drops shut under its own weight and has very minimal resistance. It does have steel washers on the inside so that the bearings are running against steel rather than against titanium. That should prolong the lifeline, the, the life uh, of this knife. Uh, and the uh, lockup is quite good. The detent is tuned very well to uh, accommodate all of those different opening mechanisms that I showed you. Uh, and then the lockup is very solid. Here you can see the liner lock engaging the blade tang uh, at about 25, maybe 35%, something like that. A very solid lockup. Uh, and this is another one of those instances where a good liner lock can be just as good, if not better, in a lot of ways than a frame lock. I personally like a strong liner lock mechanism because the ergonomics are significantly improved by removing the frame lock cutout on this side. This knife is in keeping with that theme and is quite comfortable in the hand. Uh, Bob did understand ergonomics when he was designing this. So your first finger rests in this choil, the second finger here, and the third and fourth in that area, and it's quite comfortable. One thing I've noticed is that some people have complained that the corners of this knife are a little bit too sharp and they've sanded down the corners. I don't particularly find them to be overly sharp. The only area that I find to be somewhat sharp is actually these cutouts here on the lock bar. There are some teeth ground into this to grab your finger for when you disengage it. I find that wholly unnecessary because there is already a significant uh, gap right there where you could press on the lock bar. Uh, so that added traction, it does help, it does function, but it's a bit uncomfortable and sometimes my finger skin gets trapped in there and uh, it kind of tears it up a little bit. The jimping on the flipper tab is not overly sharp and this is not overly uncomfortable, very easy to use. Uh, moving back to the clip here, I love, love, love that they've done a Terzula style 3D milled hidden hardware clip. This is so nicely done, and riding against this flat G10, it slides in and out, out of the pocket so nicely. It's got a G10 backspacer, uh, and it, it has these bronze titanium liners. This is the bronze and black version. This is the one that I wanted. I thought this was the most handsome combination. They have a, a green, an OD green one, and then maybe one other variant as well. This is what I thought was the best looking one. So I think, uh, what are my thoughts on this knife? I think that they executed this thing brilliantly. Uh, it's just the right size. It's just the right uh weight, it's the right materials, it's just well executed, and it's Bob Terzula's design. This is history right here, where we get one of the classic and like the, the most classic and awesome tactical folding knife designs turned into a full production model and available to the masses. If you want to know what a good tactical knife is like, get a Terzula. It is something that you need to understand that this man is a legend, that he really built the tactical knife world as it is today, and he deserves to be revered. It's interesting that he's gone to Chinese-made knives right now. I, I won't really comment on that. You guys can comment on that down below. 
I'm not sure if I did do a size comparison with the Spyderco Para 3 here and then the Para 2, so you'll see that it's coming in around this Para 3 size range right there. Uh, in any case, guys, I'm a big fan of this knife. I do think that this is probably one of the best collaborative efforts that we and Mastrop have done. Also, the Thresher was very excellent. So definitely happy with this knife. Very impressed and worth every penny of the $130 to be able to own a Terzula design executed this well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Click like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and take care.